Welcome to Tuesday Talks. We realize that life is hard. We all have questions that we wouldn't even think about asking out loud. The comforting thing is, you're not alone. We're all asking them. That's what this podcast is for. Each week, we're going to talk about hard questions and painful points in life. We won't shy away from anything. If you've thought it, we're going to talk about it so you feel seen and understood. Join us for our conversation this week on Tuesday Talks. What's up, everyone? What? Welcome to another week of Tuesday Talks. Thank Woo-hoo. you so much for joining. <laughs> Corinne, it is good to have you back. Thanks. It's good to be here. <laughs> and we've got a newbie. <laughs> What's going on? So, newbie, introduce yourself. So, I'm newbie. Uh, my name is Grant Allen, and I get to be on the Long Haul student team. Yeah. So, like we have with um, all of our new guests, um, we had Grant bring three items um, that encompass him as a person. So, Grant, uh, what three items did you bring for us today? Yeah, so our first one is uh, a book, and it is actually more about the author than it is the specific book because mm. the uh, there have been actually two books that kind of in the last year or year and a half of my life, uh, this author has like directly impacted me. His name is John Mark Comer. Mm. Uh, this book is called Live No Lies, and the other one that impacted me greatly is called Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I have that one in my backpack. I, I could have oh, dropped sweet. it in here Perfect. for you. Perfect. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, so it's been super impactful for me personally mm-hmm. in my life and journey through trying to work and navigate through the American culture, mm-hmm. um, American dream mindset, and go, what does it look like for me to not waste my life? And what does it look like for me to actually make my life count in a way where I can actually rest and spend time with the Lord and abide with Him, but also be able to accomplish things and do things well. Um, I'm a recovering performance junkie is the way I like to say it. Mm. Um, And John Mark is a guy that's helped me kind of realize what it looks like to rest in Sabbath. Yeah. So that's my first one. Um, And we're going to kind of go like bigger. We're going to get bigger each time. So we start with a book. Next one is a pair of shoes. Now, this is not just any pair of shoes. Uh, I'm, I'm a big shoe guy now. I Mm -hmm. tell a lot of our students that are like, man, you have like all these Jordans. And I'm like, I really don't have that many. It's really because of my wife that I have so many, but it is also because I don't. I'm not at an age where I can just get a bunch of toys for Christmas. Right. I'm at the point now where I just want to get shoes. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm like, these are my version of toys. And like for my birthday and Christmas, that's what we ask for. I turned uh, 24, and when I turned and had my Jordan year, uh, my in-laws were willing to get me a really really cool like gift where 23 and 24 going into like my Jordan's year with like Kobe year back and forth. I I realized I said 23 and it's supposed to be 24, but it was 23. When I turned 23, I got these specific Jordans for my Jordan year Mm -hmm. and I've had them. um, And I don't really wear them at all because they're so rare, um, but they're actually from the eighties. My father-in-law used to wear these all the time. Um, and he wore them out basically everywhere he went and didn't know that they were going to be so popular one day. Yeah. But they are. these are one of the most like rare shoes to find, and you can't really find them anywhere. But my mother-in-law refurbished them, mm-hmm. and they were a gift to me when I turned 23. Uh, and it's like one of my favorite pair of shoes that I just keep around. I'll keep them in a box, and I wear them on like the biggest times, but that's about it. So, yeah. yeah they, if, you're, if you're wondering, uh, uh, for those not – Grant, what what would the name of those be for those that can't see them? But are yeah, just so they're they're the like patent bred like Jordan ones that are like the they're called the band ones where because it had just black and red on it, it didn't have any white on it. They were actually banned from the NBA, so Jordan um, wasn't really allowed to wear them in games, and they didn't sell a lot of them because they were banned at the time. Um, so yeah, there's no way that price is right. That yeah. is insane. I yeah. just looked it up on StockX. Yeah, I'll look it up every now and again, and I get different answers, but it's it's kind of dumb. And these yeah. are not, just to be clear, these are not worth that price. No, so no, if you Google yeah. that, because they are very much, they have stuff coming out of them, and they've been like repainted, but it's still pretty cool to be able to have that shoe. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So you can leave, yeah, leave yeah, them I'll leave them right there. And then your last item. Yeah, so my last item is uh, actually my high school letterman jacket. Uh, I was trying to think of something that I could bring in that kind of tells you a little bit of what I like to do. Um, 
I told you a little bit of who I am, what I enjoy, um, and then this can kind of tell you what I like to do. So basically what this is is that it's just this big old purple jacket. It looks like Barney the Dinosaur <laughs> because my high school was purple, black, and gold, and then white for a little bit. And so um, this is basically I played sports all throughout my life. Um, I played basketball, ran cross country. I love anything with a ball you can put in a hoop or anything you can pretty much play and make it competitive. Um, basketball was like my first love, so it was really fun to get to just do this. So this is kind of what I use as like my illustrations now yeah. um, because I actually – the funny story is that I actually wore this to college um, mm. and I brought this to college and I almost wore it to class because, Already fell. because mm. no one told me I didn't know no one told me that you don't bring high school stuff to college so for high school students don't bring your high school stuff to college please mm. this is your it's I'm gonna true. I'm gonna help you out but and you can but you can it's just not not your big old purple letterman jacket maybe that's Correct. more what it Unless, is you wear a t-shirt but yeah, unless you're homeschooled and your like sporting team, which was like mine, looks like a travel team, and no one cares about that anyways. Like it's like oh, just travel sports. It's no big deal. It's like oh true. no, this was my entire life in high school. Very so true. very true. Very uh, true. Shout out to all the homeschoolers that are listening. I stand with you. <laughs> um, so sweet. Well, thanks for bringing that. Yeah. Um, so as you guys can tell by the title, today's episode, uh, we are starting into um, a mental health conversation. And I wanted to just take a moment and um, not give necessarily a disclaimer, but say like, this is not us saying we have a fix to anything. Uh, we are not professionals. Um, if anything, this is kind of a intro to the mental health conversation. That is a much larger mental health conversation. And uh, we want to have um, people who have devoted their lives to the, the brain and how it works and the health of the brain um, and have them on um, to be able to talk more in depth about more specific issues. But the question that we have today is, if I'm struggling with mental health, does that mean I need more Jesus? And um, this is actually a question that we had sent in. Um, and so someone sent it in through um, the form that you can get if you text Tuesday to 98173. Um, and so I'm really excited that someone sent a question like this in and that we're able to tackle it. Um, so all that to say, if you have questions, send them in because this is an example of how we're going to answer them. Um, and so with that, Grant, Corinne, if I am struggling with mental health, does that mean I need more Jesus? Yeah, I'm really thankful, just honored to be on this podcast. I feel like I definitely don't come as an expert, but as a friend that has asked this question a lot in her life and still asks it now, um, maybe knows the answers a little, not knows the answer, but maybe knows that has a different perspective now, um, mm -hmm. but still goes back to, oh gosh, this is hard. Um, and so I think obviously one of the things, not obviously, but what I've learned through this is, you know, to need more of Jesus is like a beautiful thing. But I think what this question is getting after is like, do I not love Jesus enough? Do I not have enough faith? Do I just need to pray more if I struggle with these things? I'm going to have to say that's a big no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited that this is just like part one. Like Alex yeah. said, we this is something that a lot of you have asked about, this specific question we're addressing, but this sets us up to be able to have a much longer conversation to do justice to the topic. But I think just right off the bat, wanting to address, like we have got to be careful in the church and in these conversations to associate mental health and struggles with lack of faith. Um, as someone that has believed that for a long time, I wish a lot sooner Maybe someone could have told me that, but hopefully we can be friends to say, even if you know that in your head, we want to walk alongside you until it like is something that you can believe in your heart and see. But I'm also really sorry um, if this is something that you've wrestled with or people have um, given you the antidote or the solution of, well, just go pray about it. I believe in the power of prayer. It's a beautiful wonderful thing that we yep. get to commune and communicate with a father that cares and can heal. But I think we get into really uh, messy waters and this is where a lot of hurt comes when we start to associate though, that any struggle we have is a reflection of our righteousness or our goodness. Um, and I just want to like squash that right now. And I'm really glad that we get to have this conversation and hopefully this is just the beginning of a much longer conversation. Absolutely. I think that we, 
in my own mind, have to kind of approach this uh, in a similar way. So for those of you that are similar to my mindset, uh, there is not a quick fix to this. This is very much a, and that is not uh, to try to send you into a moment of despair or uh, to tell you that that's a negative comment. It's actually that this is a process for every single person. Uh, anybody that can hand you a quick fix uh, to this is probably give you something that's inadequate, that's not going to last. And so uh, just like we can't cover it in a quick fix podcast and tell you everything you need to know, uh, just for you to understand that this is a long game, I needed somebody to tell me that of when there comes kind of struggles and walking through what even is a struggle, uh, it is important for us to like navigate through these conversations and going, this is not just like a three minute, five minute, 15 minute fix. You're going to have the formula to mental health. You're going to have the formula to struggle and any struggle that you go through. Uh, so for me, it was helpful just to even hear, like, it's a long game to this. This is, this is us w- trying to pursue health in a lot of different ways. So um, I'm excited to get to dive into it a little bit more. So if like the, we hear Jesus gives us freedom from X, Y, Z. So how come I'm hearing you guys say like the opposite of that? Doesn't Jesus equal freedom from mental health, from struggles with mental health and things like that? Yeah, I think it's a great kind of difference to understand that we can very easily communicate from a stage and it be assumed um, what freedom is and what struggle is, I think we have to like clearly define what does freedom mean mm. in my current context with Christ? What does freedom mean one day? Um, and I think those things are the areas where we just assume they're all in one and we go freedom is what it is now is what it will always be. Um, and what I have maybe promised one day is what it is now. And when we get those things confused, it sets us up for disappointment. It sets us up to go, I'm questioning God because somebody told me that I get freedom in this way. Um, And so I would even, there's a definition that uh, Corinne and I use of talking through what suffering is and what that means that we really got from Elizabeth Elliott. Um, and I would love to, Corinne, if you want to kind of, you have it in memory, so I would love for you to say it <laughs> sure. so that I don't paraphrase yeah, it. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, so Elizabeth Elliot says that suffering is having something that you don't want or wanting something that you don't have. And she explains that that covers the gamut of finding out about a cancer diagnosis all the way to like your car not working in the yeah. morning. And like, we all carry these tensions and these struggles and these things that maybe we wouldn't have chosen for ourselves, or there are things that we feel like are missing in our lives. And it's not that we necessarily have to be like, yay, I love that none of this is going my way, but it's actually just a bigger picture of, but are we willing to just trust God even when we don't understand? And I am just going off what you said, Grant, I feel like if you keep listening to the podcast or if I keep getting to come on here or you ever talk to me in person, I'm going to probably always like talk about finding new definitions or like Mm. the words we use and the definitions that they carry are just messed up and we need to like open that conversation. So I feel like freedom. What does that mean? I feel like we like to define freedom oftentimes as like um, the absence of like these everything bad. Um, I never struggle. I never wrestle. And I don't know what that actually, like our definition in our mind of freedom, I would actually call that. But I think freedom in Christ is real freedom. Like, I'm not trying to say that what he gives us is not freedom, but we have to maybe open our minds to, I really think that the freedom that we have in Christ is a lot more about hope, Mm -hmm. Um, a hope that it won't always be like this, and that if we are in Christ, one day we will be fully restored and healed. What I wish I would have been taught maybe sooner or what I commit to helping other people understand is we probably will not find this healing that we want on this side of eternity. And what I mean by that is like the healing that I often want is I never want to struggle with the stress and anxiety that I have dealt with and I'm currently dealing with and going to counseling for. It's just like if I were choosing, I think some days I'm like, yep, I'm over it. I want to be healed. Mm -hmm. And I do have the hope that there will be a day that he will restore and he will completely heal. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to heal now. It just has to look different. And so what I've come to learn is the healing that he does on this side of heaven may feel incomplete, but I have the hope that one day it will come but doesn't mean that it's like hung over my head and I can't even get to any form of healing. 
But this healing on this side of heaven, I think, is learning to trust God. It's learning to give him glory in the midst of hurt. But it also means like recognizing and acknowledging pain and letting ourselves like suffer and grieve. But in, and then instead of like running away, pushing away God, getting angry in that pain, realizing like, but thank God, like I have him to like walk with me through this. And Paul talks about this in Second Corinthians 12. I encourage you to read it. Um, but you can read in a lot of different translations and versions and paraphrases. But um, part of what he talks about in Second Corinthians 12 is Paul literally uses the wording of this gift of a handicap. So he had a thorn in his flesh. We can get into it later. But just we don't know if it's physically. We don't know what that thing was. Yeah. But something was making it really hard for him. And he begged God to take it away. And God actually said no. <laughs> and did that mean because God didn't care? God didn't love him. No, I actually think that God cared too much about him than to do what Paul wanted mm. when God saw like the bigger picture. Mm. And so Paul obviously has gone through wrestling and can now see it as a blessing. So I'm not saying we have to like struggle and be like, yay, I love this right now. But as he's reflecting, he s- begins to see this handicap as a gift because he said it kept me in, co- um, in constant touch with my limitations. So what Satan said to do is best to get me down what he in fact did was push me to my knees. And that's kind of the message paraphrase of what is this idea of what if the things that we're struggling with, some have more visible handicaps or maybe you talk about it more and it feels like everyone else has their life together. But what if actually we all have limitations, we all have wounds, we all have struggles, whether we choose to talk about it or not is going to change things. Mm -hmm. But what if they are God's actual graciousness and mercy, not because he doesn't care that we're suffering, but he is allowing us to have access to him in the middle of the suffering. And in addition to that, we get the promise of him healing us forever one day. But I like, I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of dealing with this. And my, my parents are telling me that my parents are telling me the opposite of what you're telling me. So what is that? Like, how do I balance all of this? You, you know, you're saying like, you need more God, or you don't need more God, but my parents are telling me that like, I'll be fine if I pray more. So like, are my parents wrong? Like in, you know, like, like, I, yeah, I think that anytime you're addressing somebody that may have a different viewpoint, and even if you're on this podcast and you're, you heard us say, Hey, it is not actually that you have to like pray it away or it's not a quick fix. And we just met you don't really know whether we're right or wrong. I want to give you, and I want you to be able to entertain exactly what Corinne just read you, but I would encourage you, go read 2 Corinthians. Like, And I want to give you some more biblical, like this is not just something we're sitting in a room and going, hey, we just think this way and this is our thoughts. This is actually from the Bible, what we are studying and what we're seeing and really what Jesus was advocating for. One of those is I would encourage you to take your parents, take your friends to first. Kings 19. Let them see a passage of scripture in the Old Testament where there's a guy named Elijah who is an amazing prophet of God, and he just stood on a mountain, and he called down fire (laughs) onto a ginormous like stack of just completely wet wood that had a ginormous pool of water around it, and he called down fire onto it. And then literally the next moment, He's struggling mentally. He's struggling. When we see in Romans the call to renew our mind, this is the call to mental health. This is the call to say you are going to have to struggle, and there is going to be a struggle among you on earth, and that renewing of your mind is a process. It's not a one moment, one quick fix, and it's not just, hey, if you pray, 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 it'll go away. Yeah, That's not just for mental health. That's for our struggles and navigating through hardship and as Corinne gave you the definition of struggle and suffering I would encourage you to write that down and bring those things to people that are going hey if you just will like pray more or show up to church more this is not an external fix Mm -hmm. and I think that's where prayer is an amazing thing showing up to church and being a part of service is an amazing thing but that's just trying to modify your like circumstances mm-hmm. and modify your surroundings and trying to just do an activity that's not actually trying to address the main struggle the main part that you're suffering with and so for you that are sitting there and going and listening to this podcast and going I'm struggling and people are telling me the opposite 
there is neutral ground at the Bible. There is neutral ground at the examples of what God gave us for you to be able to advocate for. Maybe this isn't just freedom means that everything goes away the moment I pray a prayer. It's that actually there's a beauty to the suffering. There's Mm -hmm. a beauty to the dependency because it's in your limitations that you get the opportunity to recognize that I need someone outside of myself. That's where we get to see the gospel, and that's where we get to start going, okay, these are my limitations, these are my struggles. I now have hope, right, Mm -hmm. Corinne? That's what you said. Like It is presence and hope. That's Mm -hmm. what the freedom on earth is, and that's what we get with the gospel. But it may not be in the way that I want it to be. It may Mm -hmm. not be in the way that I desire for it to be. And if you're listening and going, this is this is still hard and you're in the thick of it. Know that this is not something that is going to be taken away in a second or a moment, but it is something that you can feel the power from the Holy Spirit to have peace. It is something where you can mm-hmm. begin a process of feeling a weight lifted, but it takes us being able to learn what it means to renew our mind. I just used that phrase, but that phrase is such a like deep, impactful yeah. phrase that we mm-hmm. could spend hours talking about and that's something we can study together kind of a thing. So. Yeah. And I feel like there's so much here. And I guess I want to be clear. Like part of there is healing, yes, fully to come. But doesn't mean that there aren't things that we can do to cope, to like recover, to be at a version, not a version of ourselves, but to be in a healthier place. And so like for me practically, like I go to counseling every other week right now. Um, but I also meet with a nutritionist. I work out, I drink water, I get sleep. Like I have like some breathing techniques, some grounding things. There's a lot throughout my week that I'm having to constantly use Romans 12, like what you were saying of renewing our mind, like, and God promises to bring about that transformation. So I guess I felt like I wanted to insert there that it's not just like, sorry, you're just going to struggle until you get to heaven. Yeah. Buckle yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Y- yeah. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> I, you can't see me, but it's just, it is that messy tension of, yes, in a complete sense, you won't have the healing that you're probably picturing in your mind until heaven. But it is coming. But that also doesn't mean that it just is what it is right now. I hate, mm. like, I don't like that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, there are definitely things. There are therapists, there's medicine, there are tools. And so back to your question, Alec, though, of like, if my parents or if friends like maybe don't get it, I just, I'm praying for you to have gentleness um, in this struggle. That's something that my counselor has been reminding me that I need to have with people um, mm. that maybe don't understand it and to like, have um I guess a soft heart to not get mad but thick enough skin to just be like they might not like know how to deal with this and that doesn't make it okay but it does say like I just because they don't get it doesn't mean that that's like my reality and so just to encourage you if you feel that then I'm praying for favor in conversations that people are willing to listen but even if they're not it doesn't mean that People don't care that God doesn't care. And Paul talks a lot about suffering in all his Mm. books. I mean, even 2 Corinthians 4, if you go back, he says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And I think sometimes we hear those verses and we're like, but we're not these things. We're not these things. But we are pressed and perplexed, Mm. and we are hunted down, and we are knocked down, and we suffer. And it's like... Those things still happen. Mm -hmm. And I guess someone that we, I just look up to so much is a lady named Catherine Wolf. And I know we're kind of running out of time, but she's someone that I think lived like she was a model. She lived this like great life and at about 26 suffered a stroke and now is bound to a wheelchair and suffers from some paralysis. And she might be the most joyful person I have ever listened to speak. Mm -hmm. And if you have a chance to look up there, organization hope heals do it um but one of the statements it's just a one sentence thing she talks about she says i can give god the glory and it can still hurt Mm. and i feel like that's been really helpful for me is there's days i still really cry and i get really tired of fighting some of these things but i ask god to help me remember like that the real enemy is not my parents that don't understand. It's not my friends that make light of it. The real enemy is Satan. Mm -hmm. 
Ephesians 6, John 10, 10 reminds us that there is a very real enemy and it's not people. Mm. But there are still people that don't understand and might say hurtful things and it can hurt and we can grieve that. But can I encourage you to bring that hurt to God Mm. and to like hurt with him? Because I believe he very much cares for you and wants to walk with you through this and has given us things like counseling and medicine and Mm -hmm. ways to take care of ourselves to cope and to be to some better like restored place. Um, But I think that also starts with our soul and it starts with the patience to be on the journey. So that's why I'm excited that yes, this is like part one. And if you're like, but you didn't address, what do I do with my mental health? That's kind of intentional because we're not experts. Um, I just want to be a friend to say, I, cry a lot and get frustrated and get really tired but then God really does help me get back to the don't grow weary of doing good don't give up on trusting me because if I'm good and I've always been good then I'm only going to continue to be good and to use these things um, to bring you closer to me um, to help you be able to relate to people because ain't nobody can relate to someone that has their life together Mm. and in that gosh, we're going to see more of God and we're going to be able to look ahead to heaven and invite other people on that journey too. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for being on Grant and Corinne. Absolutely. Um, like we've said, this is just the beginning of this conversation. Um, and it, this is not a one or two, three episodes of we're done. Like this is a conversation that will continue on. Um, as the podcast goes on, because we know this is a lot of, this is a lot of what you guys care about and want to hear about. Um, and so, uh, I encourage you guys to keep listening. Um, we will keep recording as we are able to adequately do so. We don't want to give you guys a, uh, an podcast or an answer to a question that is a half answer. Like we want to make sure that we are giving you guys the best answers we can. Um, so, uh, with that, if you have questions you want to ask that you want us to tackle, uh, text Tuesday to 98173, and you'll get a form to be able to submit a question just like this one was submitted. Um, so anyways, Grant, Corinne, thank you both for being on. Thank this you. was awesome. Yeah, Y'all crushed it. Um, so thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next week. See ya.